All right, people, let's get into chapter two here. So I'm going to kind of break this up so it's not one gigantic monster lecture that you have to sit through. But the first little video I'm going to make is going to talk about the metric system, uh, temperature, and density. So on that note, click. There we go. Computer's being a little funky. All right, so when you're studying the world around you, trying to figure out how things work, you're going to be making measurements. And... It's really good to have a, a set system of measurement that everybody agrees on. And that, that's why we have these different systems. If, let's say you, you order something online and you thought it was going to be like a, a foot long and six inches wide and 10 inches tall or something, you'd have a, a particular idea about the size of it. But if the people you're ordering from used a different system and their idea of a foot and an inch were totally different than yours, you might get something very different than what you're planned on. So that's just kind of really quickly like why a, a system is good. So we use the metric system in science. In fact, pretty much the whole world uses the metric system. Only Burma, Liberia, and the USA, are the, those are the three countries that don't use the metric system. And why is that? It's because of pirates. Google it. <laughs> pirates. Blame pirates. Anyhow, um, mass, the base unit of mass is going to be a kilogram. The base unit of length is a meter. Time is measured in seconds. Temperature is Kelvin. The amount of stuff you have, we, we use something called a mole. And don't worry about current or luminosity. Um, those are for different classes. In physics, we talk about amps and stuff. But um, All right, cruising through this stuff. There are derived units. So if I'm measuring the area of something, I measure the length, and then I have the width, and so length times width. If they're both measured in meters, area is going to be square meters. Volume. Same kind of thing. I have length, width, height. So meters times meters times meters will give me a volume. That's going to be cubic meters. The density. It's kind of like how much stuff you have in a given amount of space. All right, it's mass over volume, which I'm going to talk about later, later in this chapter. So you have kilograms per cubic meter, which is kind of huge. Usually in, the, uh, in chemistry, we talk about grams per cubic centimeter. It's just a little, little bit nicer numbers for us to play with um the molar mass it's it's how much a it's the mass of one mole of substance it's grams per mole and energy that's a weird one joules right it's kilogram times meter squared per second squared i will derive that um later on all your prefixes uh, normally would be in a classroom and they'd be up on the wall but i have them on the next slide here so Giga, mega, kilo, deci, centi, milli, micro. Like you've probably heard these a lot, especially with like computers and phones and stuff like that. It's, it's gotten people a lot more used to the metric system now than back in the old days. Like a back to the future, like 1.21 gigawatts. He like mispronounces that. Kind of funny. But we don't use all of these all the time. But milli, pretty common. So like milliliters, right? Uh, a milliliter is one thousandth of a liter. So there's a thousand milliliters in one liter. It's the only way to think of that. Um, kilo, like a kilogram, kilogram, it's a thousand grams or a, yeah, God can't talk, kilometer. It's one of those weird ones where it's like, you don't say kilometer, it's just kilometer. So it kind of switches you off there, but it's a thousand meters. So be able to switch within the metric system. It's nice. It's easy. It's all based on tens. So it makes it really nice. It's not weird like our system, which is like a foot, which is 12 inches. It's like, huh? It's, it's goofy. It's metric system, like once you kind of get used to it. It is pretty nice, but I, I will admit I'm, I'm not fully switched over. I'm always converting pounds and kilograms in my head. And like, what? Okay, that okay, that's a lot. Cool. So, all right, moving on from the metric system, let's talk about temperature now. The temperature of something tells you how hot or cold it is. And heat always flows from hot to cold. So it's just like a marble. If you have a marble on a smooth slope, it's always going to roll downhill. Heat always goes from hot to cold. It's just how, how things are. Um, Let's talk about the different ways we, we measure the temp. So the temperature is basically the measure of how much heat something has. The more heat an object has, the higher its temperature. So we measure the, the temperature just based on, we, we wanted something in nature that would be reproducible that everybody could kind of latch onto. So the, the Celsius scale, that's the one I'm gonna talk about first. Celsius scale, it uses the freezing point of water and the boiling point of water. Those were our natural landmarks, if you wanna call them that to where this scale is based on. So zero degrees Celsius, that's where water freezes. 100 degrees Celsius, that's where it boils. Fahrenheit, which is what we're used to, is kind of weird. Um, Daniel Fahrenheit, when he designed this scale, he used the he set zero at the freezing point of a brine solution. 
<clears throat> which is like a, a salty water solution. So salt water solution was the freezing point of salt water solution. That was what he had as zero. And 100 was, from what I heard, is actually just like his wife's armpit. <laughs> so like normal body temperature. So on this scale, water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit and it boils at 212. So when I go from frozen water to boiling water, that's 180 degrees Fahrenheit that it changes. But if I'm in the Celsius scale, that's 100 degrees. It's the same change. But what we see here is that a degree Celsius is larger than a degree Fahrenheit. So, and then Kelvin, which is our actual SI unit of uh, temperature, this is basically the Celsius, Celsius scale slid down, kind of swished down. There's something called absolute zero. So on the Kelvin scale, there are no negative Kelvin temperatures. It starts off at zero and just goes up. Absolute zero is negative 273.15 Celsius. So this is basically shifted off by 273.15. So water freezes at 273, boils at 373. So it's still a 100 degree interval there. All right, so when we're switching around stuff, Celsius to Kelvin, that's what you do most in this class. It's really easy. You just add 273.15 to your Celsius temp, and now you're in Kelvin. And if you want to switch from Kelvin to Celsius, you just subtract 273.15. All right, if you're looking at like our temperatures versus like the rest of the world and you know they're listing their stuff in Celsius and like, I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. And how do I go Celsius and Fahrenheit and Fahrenheit to Celsius? They're right here. So to go Fahrenheit to Celsius, you take five ninths times your Fahrenheit temp minus 32. And if you want Celsius to Fahrenheit, you just do algebra actually. Um, you solve it for Fahrenheit. So the nine goes up, the five goes down, you add 32. And you get 9 fifths Celsius plus 32 equals your Fahrenheit temp. So we're going to do mostly this one up here, but every now and then you might see something like this. So just be able to do those. Let's talk about a volume. All right. Volume, just so you guys know, so I know like metric system, sometimes it does throw people, even though it's, it is kind of all around us. If you go to the store and you get a two liter bottle of soda, right? Liters, it's metric. All right. But one cubic centimeter, so a cube that's one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter, that's called a cubic centimeter. That's the same thing as a milliliter. So a cubic centimeter is a milliliter. All right, if I have a thousand of those, so a thousand milliliters equals one liter, that's actually a cubic decimeter. So 10 centimeters by 10, centi bleh, 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. That's basically one decimeter, one decimeter, one decimeter, right? And then, so there's a thousand liters in a cubic meter. So there's a million milliliters in a cubic meter. So that's kind of how those all connected. If I'm looking at how to measure volume in a lab, there's all sorts of different ways we have to get volumes of things. So if I'm dealing with liquids, obviously, I'm gonna put those in a graduated cylinder or a syringe, but there's something called a burette, which is really nice for measuring amounts of volume that you dispense. So it's got a little valve down here that you can open and then you can measure how much comes out. Um, there's pipettes. They have really fancy pipettes nowadays that are actually digital. It's got a little connector that goes on top here and you can just dial in. I want 2.546 milliliters and hit a button and then it'll just bloop, pull it up, put it over your container. It'll dispense it. Really cool. And volumetric flasks. These are good for measuring volumes of um, solutions that you make in the lab. All right. Let's keep on going. Let's get to density here. A couple more slides. Um, we talked about physical properties in the last video. And so one physical property that's really useful is density and density is just a ratio of mass over volume. So density <clears throat> equals mass divided by volume. So D equals M over V. That is an equation. It's also just the definition of density. So it's a ratio of mass to volume. Mass is usually measured in grams. Our volume is in either milliliters or cubic centimeters, which as you now know, that's the same thing. All right. Solids and liquids can have different volumes. So how do you get the, the volumes of these things? Well, it's a liquid, yeah, just put in a graduate cylinder and measure it or something. But if we're dealing with um, solids, if it's a regular shape solid, meaning it has 90 degree corners on it, so it's shaped like a cube or shaped like a big rectangle type thing, right? Length times width times height, right? Measure centimeters by centimeters by centimeters. Multiply it all, you get cubic centimeters. It's volume, nice and easy. But most things are not regular shapes. They're a weird shape. If you go get a rock out of your backyard, it's going to have a really weird shape. So how do we get the measurement or how do we get the, the volume of that? We use what's called the displacement of water. So you get a large graduated cylinder 
you put some water in there, you measure exactly how much of the water is in there, and then you carefully place your rock into that water so it's completely submerged, and then reread the volume of the water. You're going to see the water volume is going to go up. All right, that difference in the volume, that's the volume of your object. It's kind of the same reason why if you're going to take a bath, you don't fill your bathtub all the way up to the tippy top because when you get into that bathtub, you're going to displace a bunch of water. It's going to spill over the place and make a big mess and it'll be horrible. Um, a good thing to know is that the density of water is one gram per milliliter. About. So just, it, that pops up kind of like all through this course and all through science. So it's just kind of like a, a handy fact to know that the density of water is one. Um, if something has a density of less than one, it floats on water. If something has a density greater than one, it sinks in water. And that is basically, that's that. So that's that for this talk. I will catch you in the next one. See you, see you.